Well, if you love ancient Egypt, then this has been quite the year for it, with games like, of course, Total War Pharaoh, and also a DLC for Old World coming out called, I think, Pharaoh of the Nile. And earlier in 2023, we also got a Pharaoh game that was basically a remake of the original Sierra games. Well, this one certainly is for you. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to The Builders of Egypt, the game that we covered about three years ago and has yet another playtest slash demo for the Steam Next event. Now, what's interesting with this game is that I feel like I've played this many times since we first played it back in, what, March of 2020? And now it's been about over, well, three years, and the game still doesn't have a release date or whatnot, but certainly is much more polished and uh, coming together quite well. There's a third-person or first-person Builders of Egypt game coming out as well called, well, it's uh, Egyptian Frontiers, which is kind of like Chinese Frontiers as well, where you get to build a little bit of ancient cities in Egypt, but also focus on third- and first-person construction of the Great Pyramids. So, yeah, it's, it, there, there's a lot of stuff coming out, and uh, I had had to play this one once or twice to make sure if I could remember playing it before and or these current scenarios. So today we're going to take a look at uh, the Builders of Egypt scenario campaign for this one, which features two missions, of course, all of these blending together where you start a city from nothing along the Nile, start farming and trading and making bricks and pottery, and then shipping things up and down in order to make some profits. Now this game also seems to feature military campaign and walls and whatnot, so it's certainly promising for if and when it'll eventually come out. In fact, at the bottom there it says uh, playtest 0.890, so hopefully we're getting close to a 1.0 release, although, uh, you know, they take more time to make it, hopefully they do it right. I mean, no rush if it's not ready, so, I mean, that's all better for us. If you want to see more building games here on the channel, make sure you subscribe right now and turn on that notification bell, smash that like button, and become a member today. All those links down below. And let me know what you think of the game down below. Just keep in mind that this game is free right now uh, for the Steam Next event and might possibly be free for longer. You never know. But anyway, without further ado, let's take our first look at the Builders of Egypt campaign within Builders of Egypt. Let's go. Now, I think I've been delightfully surprised here, too, because there are two initial campaigns that we can choose between, one of which is your basic gather uh, bricks, well, clay to make bricks and pottery and then sell that, and then another one to export jewelry and do things probably along the lines of uh, gold mining and whatnot, but then also two other campaigns that look to be locked that hopefully are unlocked by playing the other two in this uh, demo rather than just going through the whole game. But it looks like, unfortunately, yeah, there's going to be a few that are locked here and there wow that's quite a lot of campaigns my goodness whoa look at this wow we're going up into the 30 plus camp look at that all right so i guess they've been working on this game for quite some time for good reason with things like alexandria here and also uh maybe some other common locations or popular locations for history and uh yeah Wow, I'm really surprised by that. Yeah, building the pyramids, for example. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess we start really far in the past, at the very beginning. A glorious capital for Kemet. Let's go. The first Egyptians established arable fields, mainly for spelt, barley, and date palm, because their meals were based on bread and beer. Cattle, pigs, sheep, and goats were reared but most often tasty and nutritious fish of various species supplied by the Nile was eaten. Continuously developing craftsmanship supported the development of agriculture and breeding, thanks to the brickyards, which produced sun-dried mud bricks. The local population could build their first houses and workshops. In the early period of Egypt's development, also, bakeries and breweries can be considered as one of the most important workshops. In order to gain hard to reach goods, the Egyptians established business contacts with their neighbors or colonized areas where they could extract valuable minerals, metals, and stone building material. So I'm absolutely positive that that intro cutscene like that is just narrated by like a chat GPT voice to AI type thing or whatever, whatever you want to call it. I am only going to assume that they'll probably hire a voice actor to read the history, but that cutscene goes on for about like a whole five and a half minutes about the history of Egypt or whatnot. So, I mean, on one hand, good, they're teaching you history. On the other hand, 
you know, make it interesting and let us learn that by playing. Okay, so our goal then is to gather 1,200 uh, pots and bricks, have 100 people living in the city, and then a prosperity of five. Okay, we can do that pretty easily. I've got to say that this uh, game is quite beautiful too. Lots of birds and whatnot flying around. Flora and fauna visible at all times. I think there might even be crocodiles or alligators, whatever one grows here. And also um, maybe hippos, although I'm not entirely sure. Um, I've got to say too, there's a few things, you know, like trees and whatnot snapping in like that that are kind of awkward, but it might be my graphical settings, but on the other hand, it's a free demo of an unfinished game, so it's kind of hard to judge everything. Uh, all right, so they're going to tell us all about how to build a city and why we're doing that and uh, what exactly to do step by step. So we're going to follow the instructions here of building a road uh, to start our city. So we'll connect to the main highway, and yeah, just like in the Caesar games, Pharaoh, uh, Emperor, Rise of the Middle Kingdom, those types of games, it is your standard build a road and fill it with homes. Okay, that's what we're going to do next. So let's go back to House and Road. And uh, yeah, we're building homes with bread here. So many of these games are similar to uh, where they, I mean, again, it's based on Egyptian history. So, you know, things like beer and bread are used as a currency. So a lot of these games have it where uh, when you build a home, it's not a actual physical like cost of gold or silver or doubloons or whatever you want to call it. It's literally uh, with bread and, and beer. That's how uh, labor was conducted. Wow, there you go. Big O chickens. Something like that. Flamingos? No. Maybe a version of them. They almost look like uh, ostriches, too. Anyway, I'm no bird expert. Let's continue to build some houses. And done. Oh, actually, two more up here on the corner. Nice. Fantastic. Now, as you'd imagine, by the time we get them supplied with water and food, they'll upgrade to another tier. So for those of you who are big fans of Farthest Frontier and whatnot, uh, you're very familiar with, you know, when a house gets all the things that it needs, then it'll upgrade to the next tier. And that does mean that our population cap will increase, too. All right, now they're instructing us to delete a road and how to do that. Get bread back for that. And now a little fire prevention. So we're going to build ourselves a fire department. In a small building, though. There's no room for the truck at all inside there. I don't I don't understand how they think they're going to get away with that. But there is a large uh, reservoir for water here. So, yeah, obviously they'll proceed on foot to wherever the fire may be or possibly do some fire pre prevention by looking at safety standards, that type of thing. Okay, so more information on how the game works, essentially telling us about populations and their requirements to grow and for people to want to move in. Going to build this little well here, which is more for drinking water now, too. So we'll have people moving in pretty much any... Oh, wow, look at that. A huge number of people pouring into the city just in a matter of seconds. I really like in this game how the uh, population moves around, too. Once everybody's kind of been settled in, you'll see people kind of... Instead of just single file on one side of the road and single file in the other, if you pay attention, you'll kind of see them walking a little more naturally. I think some of the best games out there for how people walk in groups is like Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo. How when groups of families or friends or just, you know, people who know each other are walking together, they kind of walk in these blobs. And this game tries to simulate that a little bit. It looks realistic from a distance, you know. Uh, but I don't think we have the option to... Well, actually, we do. We have the option to click on every person and see what they're up to. Uh, what their thoughts are, what their food and uh, income are, more details about them. So if there's a problem in the city, we can click on it and find out where exactly it is, who it's with, and where they may be living to remedy that. Oh. All right, now it's time to build a ware production, a clay pit. Of course, that'll be uh, for digging out all the clay for bricks and pottery. And eventually, we'll probably build another one of those and double down on that. But it is really cool. You can actually see where they're cutting uh, clay out of the ground and then... Um, of making bricks out of them so then they can be turned into either uh, different types of bricks or pottery all right our production chain information a lot of information in this game a lot of text and certainly is similar to those sierra games for sure all right let's build a wheat farm and now to gather the wheat we're going to build a stockpile and a granary for that nice classic All right, now it's time to build a brick maker. And I think we'll build that this way. And next to that, a pottery maker. 
outstanding. So again, more information on how things move around the city, who needs what, and how they get it there. We're now going to build a fishing wharf. And I think we might build two of these buildings, or at least we can build it anywhere within here. And now a granary to store all those fish and all the wheat that we uh, create through the year. Time to build one of the most bizarre structures in the game, which is literally the bazaar. <laughs> so let's go ahead and put that down. And of course, this is where goods and food and other services and whatnot can be uh, sold, or at least people can come pick those up. There might actually be a way for uh, looking at how many people might work there and what they'll do to distribute that. But you can see beer, pomegranates, uh, figs, lettuce, chickpeas, jewelry, meat, linen, papyrus, pottery, fish, and wheat are all gathered and sold here with additional things uh, being stored over here. Some things the local population are just not going to buy. They obviously don't want flax or copper or uh, sandstone. They want things for home goods, so that's something that they're going to be purchasing from there. That's where the stockpiles more for trade between cities and or storage of intermediate goods. Like, for example, the clay from the clay pit being stored here before it goes to uh, the brickyard. Or they might take it there directly. But it is cool to see all the carts being uh, spawned like that. I'm seeing a lot of games where uh, the usage of carts is either completely overlooked or is a very complex game mechanic. For example, Austria, the game based on uh, early, eh, like Ukraine in, in 1700s, focusing more on like settling uh, for the first time there and using hand carts to transport things like clay around in buckets and then eventually shipments of nails and things like that. And then those carts have to be actually made and maintained and that's kind of on the extreme as where I've seen uh, carts in other games where they um, are a little more relaxed. Like for example in Farthest Frontier when you put down an ox wagon, it's kind of more like a smaller uh, cart that's towed around by an oxen and uh, it's a little more automatic that way once you built the building. But in this case it's just automatic from the probably the brickyard and the stockpile itself. Okay time to go look at our region. We're not here alone. We actually get to look all around Egypt and other cities that are near us. So you can see all these locations here where eventually cities will uh, formulate and we'll be able to actually go and trade with them and or invade them and or defend them and do other things with them as we expand our influence. And you can kind of see them down the river too. Either where we've not yet established contact with them or they're uh, friendly or, or a foe. In this case, uh, Tinus or Tinus. We can go ahead and trade with these folks. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up a trade route with them for 200 bread. And we're going to open up the economy tab. And we want to set a policy for exporting bricks, like we're, we're trading now with them. All right, so this is our current financial situation, um, what's coming in, what's going out. Uh, I think there might be another way to see this screen that's not on the kind of the world trade uh, view where we can trade with everyone around us. And there's our mission as well. So uh, we've already gathered a hundred pots. We need to make more bricks and gather a little bit more uh, population for our city. So let's go ahead and go back to the city itself. Now we're going to work on things like desirability. So things like decoration will be at play here. But as you'd imagine that this game will eventually have uh, faith-related buildings like uh, Seth and Ra being very important for some of the uh, different cities. Authority buildings, buildings on cultural heritage, educational buildings, and boom, military buildings and walls too. So just defensive structures like gatehouses and possibly towers will come into play here. And uh, yeah, it's going to be very important for us to defend our cities and or build things to attack enemy cities too with our military uh, buildings. Maybe things like chariots and, I don't know, catapults? Battering rams? I'm not sure if the ancient Egyptians used those, but certainly uh, something we want to look into if and when the time comes. Missed opportunity from the devs here. This is something I pointed out when we live streamed this game just to test it out a few days ago. Uh, the bug report button here, unfortunately, yeah, it's not a scarab. <laughs> I think that needs an immediate update to be able to uh, yeah, have a little scarab beetle there. I think that'd just be pretty cool. That's just me, myself, personally. That's three people. 
All right, let's go ahead and put down uh, some houses. Actually, you can see where some of them have already upgraded, so we've got more people moving in. Uh, we've got a population of 82 now, so let's go ahead and focus on putting down a few more houses. Probably put two down here. There we go. And then I want to try to put down a well, but of course the well needs to be put in a particular area in order to... Well, we can't just put it in the desert, can we? Looks like the wheat farm is ready to ship out all of its wheat. So we see um, some stalks there, uh, which might be able to be turned into building material, perhaps. But the most important thing there is the wheat for uh, beer and bread production. So that'll be important for us very shortly. And uh, yeah, storage issues, but looks like we've got it under control. So let's focus more on getting that population up. So back to work then. Let's build ourselves a road here. And we're going to try to build another well where we can. Looks like we can put one right here. And you can kind of see the coverage area. So this well here covers most of those homes. And if we po uh, post up one here, it'll cover some of the new homes that we just built. So actually, we could build four in the corner. It is good to leave a little bit of space. We can decorate them between the homes, which will increase the desirability. And we can see all sorts of things that also affect our people, like fire station coverage, Tax collection, wear production, freshwater coverage, health, and uh, also police station coverages, and a few more things there too. So crime prevention, education, etc. Let's go back to homes. We need to put a few more homes in. There we go. We'll build those like that. So yeah, you can see our our bread is actually a currency, considered a currency. They certainly do say that. Yeah, I feel like we've played at least three games that are very similar to this, but play out very differently, too. Another great, fantastic city builder that's along the lines of Pharaoh, and that's also got a rather... Uh, yeah, uh, there's a, uh, the recent Pharaoh game similar to this is a, a game called Nebuchadnezzar, which has also gotten some major updates that allow for more military focus in that game. And I believe the more recent uh, Pharaoh games are going to uh, focus on a little bit more military too, as players want. Of course, once you've mastered the economy, it's kind of a cool thing to be able to use that as a military force to then be able to defend yourself or do historically accurate campaigns and push into regions uh, that you know saw conflict and that were fought over for things like gold and uh, copper and whatnot. Pretty cool to be able to do that and replay history. Let's see if we can build a bridge. Doesn't look like we can at the moment. But let's get that population up. So our current goal, mission description, 92 out of 100. And we're going to probably increase our clay production too. Got a lot more people coming in, so let's go ahead and increase clay production. We're going to build another clay pit next to the already existing one. Hmm, looks like the Nile's already flooded. Oh, look at that. I wonder if there's an actual way to see where the flooded areas will be. That could be concerning for construction in the future, but we're safe for now. Let's build ourselves another pottery. Oh, milestone. We're now a settlement. We've done it. If we're a structured settlement, we'll need cash now. JG Wentworth, what's that phone number? You'll have to let me know down below. Some of you will know. Only the real ones will know. Let's build ourselves another pottery. And another brick maker. And we'll build a road around. One thing I wish we could do here in this game is actually build walls so we could kind of separate industrial sectors from like residential and uh, kind of act as like fire prevention, maybe. It was something I really enjoyed doing in Emperor Rise in the Middle Kingdom. Cordoning off neighborhoods separate from industrial areas and of course making a lot of uh, clay pots selling those too. A very good move. All right, first goal is complete. We got over 102 people. Fantastic. And now we just need to export bricks, so we just need to wait. Uh, just need to wait for time to catch up with us here. Now, our people are also buying some of these goods, so obviously if our people are using the pottery, then they're not going to be exporting it because they'll be buying it locally. So essentially, this is just a waiting game now for some of the basic goals, but um, oh, there's our religion tab too, which is currently unavailable. But you can see our financial tab, charts, information on gods, diplomacy, army, city stats, 
mission descriptions, and then the building browser. A lot of things are work in progress or not currently completed, but I am interested in seeing how uh, both the diplomacy and army tabs will work, but also on God. So it looks like we have uh, Ra, Ptah, and Horus, but no uh, Set and a few others. But again, this is not uh, available currently and probably is undergoing uh, some revamps and changes. We'll see before the uh, more final release. Building icons there too, cultural heritage buildings, and of course building monuments, uh, of course, like the Pyramids of Giza and uh, maybe some other actual real-world uh, works. Like, for example, perhaps we can get started very early on the uh, Suez Canal. Like, real early. You know <laughs> you know what I mean? It would be cool if we could do some stuff like that, but obviously impossible. Current season, current year, current population. All right, let's speed up time a little bit. Boom, we'll go time six. And our people really don't want anything or need anything at the moment. They're just kind of chilling. So we got a few houses that have already uh, seen prosperity up to uh, tier two. And that's what this is related to for the most part at the moment is just how many houses have upgraded. And we've got 10 out of 5 that have done so. 112 people living here. And you can see that pottery and bricks are increasing over time on their exports. So we could just essentially just sit here and just wait for the numbers to... Uh, increase over time. We've doubled the exports, or rather, the production of them. So we could try to work on trade. Actually, let's see if we can go to the trading tab and work that from here. Uh, looks like we're exporting maximum. But I guess they'll buy whatever we've exported for now. So anything sitting there is an export. So the uh, commodities uh, that we're trying to export will sit there at that warehouse, which they refer to as the, uh, could be an administration building, the stockpile, right? So the stockpile will uh, essentially get full, the trader will come by maybe once a month or once a season, and then they'll continuously uh, buy stuff and sell stuff to us. So for example, if we didn't have a lot of wheat, we could then sell the wheat, buy the wheat from selling bricks or something like that, flip that around. Wages being paid. We only have one person available for work, so we've got like uh, essentially an unemployment of one, which uh, that's fine. We'll give that guy a day off. That's me. I'm not doing anything. I'm being lazy. All these Egyptians are actually doing some work. So, uh, yeah, there they go. Now, I've got to say, another thing that we've pointed out time and time again here on the channel is, again, for a dry, bland desert and or games that could have a lot of grass and whatnot, this one, you know, aside from the weird view distance going on, lush grass... All the palm trees and other types of trees look fantastic, and the desert has some great detail, too, with looking extra dry, rough, sandy, and whatnot. So I've been seeing city builders putting a lot more effort into what used to look like what we see here, just kind of grass or sand or dirt, and putting in a lot more uh, life into them. So, you know, despite the weird appearances right now with the view angles and stuff. Again, unfinished, but still, I appreciate the potential. A game that made me notice that was a one called uh, Frozenheim, and after then, I've really noticed it and praised games like Farthest Frontier for the amount of detail they put into, for example, more fertile land, having different types of bushes, thicker grass, etc., etc. And you can see that along the Nile, too, where a lot of this uh, reeds and other papyrus and whatnot that may grow here will be noticeable near where the Nile may flood. And then you can see areas where it completely does not. And they're just dry and barren. And that just looks so realistic. Now we've got a little city to build in. Just kind of a little corner. But they've rendered out all that map. So it's pretty cool to see. So if we wanted to, we can continuously build this city for years and years. Although, uh, with the current mission objectives, we don't really need to. And we probably would need to gather things like gold and copper eventually to diversify and really branch out. Otherwise, we're just a giant brick factory. Oh, we've got ourselves a fire. Would you look at that? Let's see if the fire department responds. Uh, or they're telling us to build one down there in the corner. So, not a bad idea. Now we have, uh, oh, let's, let's see if the fire spreads. Oh, they were actually able to put it out. Well, let's raise the safety. We'll build a, uh, actually, can we build a fire department where there's no, uh, where is that? Where would that be? 
where there's no water. Oh, yeah, okay, so they could probably get the water for the fire department from the wells. And we'll plop one down over here, too. There we go. So, yeah, this is very much like in uh, Pharaoh, where you could mirror cities, and you could build them uh, essentially identically. You could build a perfect layout of one block, and then just replicate that over and over and over again. Uh, and then eventually maybe build around a marketplace, etc. Looks like we're going to keep having some fire issues for a little while. People keep leaving the stove on. We need to start an awareness campaign telling people to leave the stove off when they leave the house. Okay. I think we'll plop down one more house. So we've got people working at the fire department, at the wells, and maybe we'll expand a little bit more. But let's take a look at our goal. Yeah, we're pretty close. So we're about 1,200 and 1,000. Or almost 12. Oh, there we go. All right, perfect. The powdery is complete. And let's finish up the uh, remaining goal of the uh, bricks. So just 200 more to be exported. And as soon as the uh, people are... Or the trader has left, we should have our goal complete. And there it goes. Perfect. Excellent. So we can move on to the next level. Or we can keep playing on this one. But of course, we're going to move on to the next one. Let's go. ...was for the Egyptians a precious ore. They used it especially for inlaying gold jewelry and various kinds of objects. It was also used to create amulets and beads. Hathor became the guardian of the mine. She was often referred to as Lady of the Land of Malachite. Especially for the goddess in Sarabat el Kadim, a temple was forged in the rock, initially called Hathor Cave. Mining for this beautiful, blue-green stone was not an easy task. Numerous expeditions, including royal governors, writers, miners, desert police, and donkeys, often returned in part. The conditions were very difficult, narrow, and dark mines, where there was often nothing to breathe. Primitive camps, cold climate, frequent lack of water, and attacks of aggressive Bedouins caused a decrease in the number of company members. All right, another new mission, this time focusing on exporting jewelry and uh, doing some mining. Actually, it's kind of uh, reminiscent of some of the other campaigns, too, of many other games where they start with the initial farming and then mining. Those are, those are like the first two things that you do. Wow, they're really restricted here of uh, putting us in this one area, but all right. So they want us to build... Ten houses, a well, a bazaar, a fire station, an architect's post, which I think is for making sure that buildings are structurally sound so they don't collapse, and then also a road being connected to the main road there. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll take the skills that we learned in our previous uh, setup and do it this way. Oh, actually, we'll just connect it straight through, I suppose. All right, cool. Actually, let's get a little fancy with it, shall we? Let's go ahead and put a well in the middle. You know, actually, we could put a couple wells in the middle. All right, let's go ahead and... Ooh, we got a jewel, jeweler, a turquoise mine, copper. Nice. And we got to get some water down. Cool. I'm just going to make things fancy. I'm not going to go for any sort of high efficiency here. I'm just going to make things look nice. Nice to see the roads also kind of sorting themselves out, too. Boom. All right, let's build some houses. And before we do that, maybe we better build a fire department. Oh, we can build decorative palms, gardens, and statues now. Hold on, can I see more of that? Ah, oh, it's generic, damn. Would be a nice entrance to the town, though. Only one type of statue. Sad. All right, let's build our fire department. And we'll start building some roads. Roads? There we go. All right, let's get some homes down so people can fulfill these jobs. 
They want us to build all this in a very small area. The only oasis in the area. I think we'll build things one apart. We can fill that with decoration. Mm. But here we're a little... Uh, a little more strapped for space. Okay, we need a bazaar too. Uh, a few more houses though, a few more houses. We'll build here and here. Perfect. Connect these via road. Great, that's connected as well, it should be. Uh, we need an architect's post now. Mm hmm. Similar to the uh, fire department. We can delete that house there. Sorry, folks. First days of Pharaoh. Forgive me. And a bazaar. And there we go. We'll put the bazaar maybe over here. Great. Alright, let's put down some decorations. We'll leave that there like that. Looks really nice. Ooh, there's the turquoise. Nice. We need to build two mines, stockpile, jeweler, and enable the limit of meat to a thousand. So we're trading turquoise for meat. Interesting. Kind of a good mission to teach us how to mine this stuff. This is certainly new. I know I haven't done any of this before. So let's go with the turquoise mine. And hopefully that um, architect and whatnot can come over here to make sure that these buildings are structurally sound too. Okay, turquoise mines times two. Oh, we have to build it on the actual source. Okay. Stockpile. Which is an administrative building, I think. Indeed. And a jeweler. There we go. Stockpile, enable meat. And stockpile for 1,000. There we go. Hmm, now we're going to be mining uh, copper, too. All right, let's set up our copper mines. Same deal as before, I suppose. We'll start with the mines first. Outstanding. Alright, so set export policy for turquoise. A way to sort by material? I guess not. Uh, let's see. So we want to export turquoise. 
which is this. Uh, I'm not sure exact. Gathering, yes. Exporting, yes. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, we should be importing meat. So I guess green means export. Everything else should be exported. Oh boy. Did something explode? <laughs> I don't think so. Now we need more people living here, though. Gotta get those population numbers up. So the jeweler can work. Oh, maybe we're setting our policies here. Yeah. We want, we want to import meat. I thought we could set our imports, exports here too, or within the stockpile, but it has to be done here. So turquoise, we will, we will export, and then copper, and then jewelry. Same thing, different menu. All done there. Okay, let's set a trade route. Oh, that's a cool loading screen. So we'll open trade. And back to our city. Oh, you can see where we already built some before. And I guess now we just play the waiting game. Just as before. Everything should be connected. We're going to just need more workers here. Production building is full. Yeah, we'll need more people to work here to complete the tasks. We can even play in slow motion if you want to play it in real time, I suppose. Alright, game. I got you. Desirability. We need more people to do these jobs. Alright, that should give us enough free laborers to then go work some of these jobs like exporting now hopefully that's not too far there comes all the meat looks like these buildings too need laborers 69 nice people living in the city fantastic all right so we uh oh we just need a few more houses to upgrade we need to import uh, about another thousand meat, and we need 240 people living in the city. So we do need a large number of people living and eating, eating that meat. Let's see if we can add a few more. And yes, houses are upgrading too. Milestone. We're now a settlement. I like that transition showing that we've accomplished a goal. Well, let's build a statue, shall we? Wow, imagine living next to that. Nice. Some gardens, too. Looking real nice. Fifty-one free laborers. We have two hundred and forty is our goal. That should probably be the hardest goal here. 
I love that we're trading for bread. That's just awesome. Let's try to get some more homes. There we go. Hopefully that'll get us a bunch more uh, population. So jewelry is automatically being exported. That's just simply going to take time with our current setup. And we just need to import more meat. Hmm, zero out of 12 labor is there. Could be that they're uh, just a bit far from work. I don't know if we can actually set up homes there. Might be too far of a distance to travel, but I don't know if we can really have uh, life there without access to a bazaar. Well, maybe we can. It is true that in other Pharaoh games and whatnot, you are able to build copper and gold mines way far away and have basic homes there. Uh, although I don't think we can actually get sanitary conditions. No way. some of those houses. Alright, so we just need 500 more jewelry to be exported. We need six more homes to upgrade. And then we just need more people to move in. And we could increase the amount of uh, meat that we're importing. I think it's not total meat imports, but all at once. So we'll set that to 2,000. And we can continue to make these houses more appealing. Fire departments nearby should be able to deal with that. And we'll put some wells around randomly. Looks like we need some more workers here. It looks like nobody's living in those homes. Regardless, we're getting close. Uh, just a hundred more jewelry to export. And then uh, a few more people live in the city and to upgrade their homes. Which just might take a little bit more decoration. Oh yeah, they're upgrading. Build some more statues. Very nice. All right, at this rate we'll get it eventually. Population's uh, going up. Prosperity probably will too. Just takes a little bit of time. Ooh, are those flowers? Maybe. Cool. Well, not bad, but I was expecting more for a game that's been around for about three years or so, and I really want to see how the monument building of this game is going to work. Of course, 
setting up the basics of any city is going to be very interesting and doing trade too but i think the military and the monuments of this game are really the aspects that are on scene as well as ship trading too i hope to be able to trade via boat and whatnot up the nile and many other ways uh, with the neighbors and be able to see it a lot more but that is all for builders of egypt and hopefully it has a release date sometime soon and uh, kicks ass this is a well, I guess a beta and also a playtest and a demo all in one. So hopefully the developers are right around the corner of making something awesome. Now what's interesting here is that there's a campaign that seems to be separate from the scenarios. So there could be many more things coming with many different setup uh, locations and whatnot. But, you know, so far so good. All right, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section regarding Builders of Egypt. And uh, download it today during the Steam Next event and or in the future when this one's uh, going to release. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.